Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us try to understand the working of restriction endonucleases. So by now we know that each restriction endonuclease for in order to work they need their recognition sequence. Until and unless they could find their recognition sequence they will not perform their job. So each restriction endonuclease looks for its specific recognition sequence in the DNA. Now here you see a new term called palindromic sequence. Now what is this palindromic sequence? Now if you have observed carefully, you would have seen that all the recognition sequences, I have given you the recognition sequence for BAM H1 and for ECO R1. So for both these enzymes, if you observe the recognition sequence once again, you will see that those sequences have a special feature. That is, they are the same from when you read them from both the ends. So that kind of sequence is called palindromic sequence. So first let us understand what is a palindrome. So a palindrome is a sequence of characters that reads the same forward as well as backward. That is interesting. Now can you think of palindromes from your English alphabets? Can you think of words which has alphabets and when you read them from forward and backward it reads the same? Yes, look at these examples. Civic. So if you read it from front, so it is C-I-V-I-C. If you read it from back, even then it is C-I-V-I-C. So civic is an example of a palindrome. Similarly, level, L-E-V-E-L. -E -E it reads the same both backward as well as forward. So this is again another example of a palindrome. Madam, this is also an example of a palindrome. So you have many such palindromes from your English alphabet. Now in a very similar way, when we talk about the recognition sequence, what is a recognition sequence? It is nothing but the sequence of the nitrogenous bases. So now if you have a sequence which reads the same both forward and backward, then that kind of a sequence is called a palindromic sequence. So do you think this is an example of a palindromic sequence? Not really. That why? That's because if you read the sequence from forward and if you read it from backward, it should read the same. So that is known as a palindromic sequence. Now, why do we say that these restriction endonuclease enzymes, all of them will have a recognition sequence which will be like a palindromic sequence? So let us see why do we say that. Now, these restriction endonuclease enzymes will look for their recognition sequence. So recognition sequence would be located somewhere here because here only you have the sequence of your bases. So let us look at an example of a palindromic sequence. So let us say there this is a sequence. So from 5 prime to 3 prime direction, this is how the sequence reads. So this is from 5 prime to 3 prime. So what would be there from 3 prime to 5 prime direction? It would be somewhat like this. So now do you think that this is an example of a palindromic sequence? Now what are the two ways in which you can read? You can either read it from 5 prime to 3 prime direction or you can read it from 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Right? So these are the two ways by which you can read it. So one is from this direction and the other one is from this direction. Now when you read it from this direction, it reads G-A-A-T-T-C. Right? And when you read it from the opposite direction, it reads, what does it read? It again reads the same, G-A-A-T-T-C. So if you see that in the first case, you are reading it from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Right? Whereas in the second case, you are actually reading it the 3 prime to 5 prime sequence. So when you read it from the backward direction, you are again reading the same thing. So this is an example of a palindromic sequence. And you would have noticed that all these restriction endonuclease enzymes, they look for such sequences where it reads the same from both the direction. Now let me, so this, this example is an example of a palindromic sequence. Now, many of you might have a doubt that if this is the case, now since the two strands are always complementary, so that means that every time it should they should be palindromic because if 
5 prime, 3 prime and 3 prime, 5 prime, they are complementary to each other. There are chances that they will be palindromic. Well, it is not really like that. Not always the sequences are palindromic. Now, I will give you an example of a sequence which is not palindromic. So, let us suppose if I take an example from 5 prime to 3 prime, it reads somewhat like this G A T C T T T. So, this is how it reads from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, what would be the sequence from 3 prime to 5 prime? It would be G C T A G A A A. So, this is how it would be from 3 prime to 5 prime. So, here if you see from 5 prime to 3 prime, how do you read it? That is in this direction. You read it as G A T C T T T. Right? Now you try to read it in this direction. So in this direction, this one will read A A A G T G A T C. So both of them are not same. So this is not palindromic. So this sequence is not an example of a palindromic sequence. So whenever we talk about restriction endonuclease, the, the recognition sequence of all restriction endonuclease enzymes are palindromic sequences. So every time a, record, a sequence acts as a recognition sequence for any enzyme, that sequence has to be palindromic. And now you understand what is palindrome. The word palindrome means something which reads the same both forward and backward. When we talk about a palindromic sequence in terms of the DNA sequence, it means that if you read the sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime direction in the forward direction, it reads the same thing as it reads when you read the 3 prime, 5 prime sequence in the backward direction. So here you see 5 prime, 3 prime is being read in the forward direction and 3 prime, 5 prime is being read in the backward direction. So both should read the same. Then we say that the sequence is a palindromic sequence. And all recognition sequences for restriction endonucleases are palindromic sequences. Now this is very important and please remember this. Now, I was talking about something called as the sticky ends. Now, there are two ways by which these restriction endonucleases can cut the DNA. One is they can form sticky ends and the other is they can form blunt ends. So, let us look at the stepwise working of restriction endonuclease. So let us try to understand the stepwise working of restriction endonuclease, how exactly it cuts the DNA molecule. Now we will take the example of eco R1 throughout uh, the explanation, just to take an example so that you are able to understand how each of the endonuclease enzyme works. Now, eco ri will look for its specific recognition sequence. So, we have already discussed what is the recognition sequence for eco ri. What is it? So, the recognition sequence for eco ri is G A A T T C. So, here it will be C T T A A G. So, if this is from 5 prime to 3 prime, then this is from 3 prime to 5 prime. So, it will look for this particular sequence. So, because this is the recognition sequence for eco R1. So, now what happens? Once it is able to find this sequence in the double stranded structure of DNA, so wherever it finds this sequence, it binds to the DNA because it knows that, okay, this is the place where I need to do my job. That is, this is the place where I need to cut the DNA. So it cuts the two strands of DNA at specific points. And what are those specific points? For eco R1, the specific point is between G and A. So between these two points, it cuts the DNA strands. So both sides, it cuts at the same point. Now it cut between the same bases on each strand. And what are those bases? As we saw, those two bases are G and A. So it will cut between G and A on the first strand. It will cut between G and A on the second strand as well. Now, what will happen? As a result, DNA pieces are formed with single stranded ends, that is sticky ends. Now, what are we left with? With this, we will have one part of DNA which will look like this and we will have another part of DNA which will look like this. So, if you look at this part, this part is single stranded because it doesn't have its complementary base here. Similarly, this strand is also sing this part is also single stranded because there is no corresponding base for them. 
so therefore these are known as the sticky ends now why are they called sticky ends because the single stranded ends are ready to form hydrogen bonds with their complementary cut counterparts now since they are very much eager to uh, stick with somebody since they are very much eager to combine or to form hydrogen bond with their complementary counterparts that is why they are called sticky ends so let us have a look this is how it happens let us suppose this was the dna molecule so the eco r1 will keep on searching for its recognition sequence now let us suppose it found its recognition sequence somewhere in this region so this is the enzyme so eco ri will connect at this point that is it will bind to the dna at this point and then what will it do then it will cut the bases at the specific points like this so here you can see these region are known as the sticky ends now please note that not all restriction endonuclease results in the formation of sticky ends there are certain restriction endonuclease which form blunt ends so some restriction endonuclease enzymes also form blunt ends and what are blunt ends blunt ends are something like this let us suppose there is some sequence now i am not writing a specific sequence i am just trying to give you an example so let us suppose you have some sequence i will just write it in terms of x y z so let us suppose you have some sequence like this now these x represents the four nitrogenous bases now if an enzyme cuts it in this fashion so let us suppose if it is cut in this fashion so what will you get you will get one part like this and the other part like this so actually you see in this case this is one piece of dna this is another piece of dna so in this case you do not have any sticky ends so these type of uh, pieces of dna when formed are known as the blunt ends however eco ri the type of recognition sequence eco ri has it always produces sticky ends similarly for bam h1 that also produces sticky ends but it is not necessary that all restriction endonuclease will produce sticky and some of them can even produce blunt ends so this is how sticky ends will be formed that is dna is cut thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again